Outpainting is a method via which we can add a new part to an existing image. And this can even go so far as to generate complete panorama images like these ones. Uh, for instance, we have a nice green forest and that is actually three images stitched together, but it is hard to find the seams. And in the same way, we can generate a Swiss scenery or a city with a thunderstorm above it. Let's have a look how we can do this. Let's take the Swiss Alps as an example. And we first have to render the first image of our panorama. And to do that, I opened the default workflow. Uh, the workflows that are going to be used are all available for download in the link in the text. Um, the prompt used is simple, a Swiss landscape, mountains and sky, a flowery meadow and a village. That's all. And this is the image that came out with seed zero, even already. It looked like an image that we can easily extend further to the right. So this is a good image to start with. So before we go on, we upscale this very image with the standard upscaling available in this default workflow. But I, of course, did not use the latent upscale because that would change the image. And I need to be able to have a perfect overlap so I cannot change anything or I will start seeing seams. So uh, latent upscale is bypassed. Also the face detailer is bypassed. We immediately go to uh, an image upscale four times and then downscale to my monitor size 4K monitor. This is what came out of the upscaler, a nice image of the Switch Alps. And now we are going to extend it, outpaint it further to the right. And for that I opened the Outpaint Turbo workflow. Yeah, I used the Turbo, a Dream Shaper Turbo checkpoint. That's why I opened the Turbo workflows. And then the first thing I did is uh, from over here, load the first image here in the load image node. And the second thing is that we want to extend it to the right. And therefore I first am going to crop the image. And over here we can see the part that we cropped. That is one third of the right side of the image. Let's zoom in a little bit. And these are the numbers I used. The first image is 1536 pixels wide. So one third is 512 pixels. And I have to start uh, cutting that 512 pixels at uh, pixel number uh, 1024. Uh, let, this is how it looks. So this is coordinate 1024 and then 512 pixels. That is what this crop with these numbers is going to do. And then uh, we prepare that cropped image. Uh, so that is now the 512 pixel wide. We prepare it uh, for outpainting by padding uh, and creating a new empty space at the right side, 1024 pixels. So that the new image is again 1536 pixels. Uh, note that there is a feathering and I have put that feathering on 64. That is a, yeah, something to play with. I found out that for me this is a, a value that most of the time uh, work, works well. And uh, it's combined with the VEncode node, VAE encode node that also has a grow mask. If I put that on 32 with these two numbers I usually get not too much of a visible seam. However, you have to generate maybe a couple of images before you have an image that has a seam. Uh, this image has a small seam, a visible seam, as we can see over here. Uh, it's never perfect, uh, seldom, may, or you have to be very lucky, but there is this visible seam uh, in this area over here. You can clearly see it. Well, there are two possible strategies to uh, limit the visibility of this seam. The first strategy is just go on rendering more and more images and hope that you are lucky 
to get one with a, a small or almost invisible seam. Of course, you can try to use special in-paint um, models. They are available with several checkpoints. You also have an in-paint checkpoint and that should give less of a seam. But I simply use the Dream Shaper Turbo without an in-paint version. And I always get a little bit of a seam. So the second strategy is to move this image to an in-paint workflow and then uh, take this seam away and in-paint uh, a new part. And that is what we are going to do. Let's um, load the in-paint workflow, again the turbo version. Uh, we load our uh, image from here and we can simply drag it to uh, this load image node and we can still see that seam so we are now going to create a mask and that mask yeah you can create a, a simple vertical band but it could be beneficial to make a sort of zigzag because you will get a new seam but if you zigzag a little bit that is far less obvious using this mask what came out well maybe you have again uh, to create a couple of images and select the best one this is one that came out and yeah i do not really see a very visible seam if we would go back to the previous image we see clearly the seam over there and the new image uh, it even created some new mountains and well maybe over here there's a little bit uh, a difficult area but uh, well, that is almost invisible if you do not know that it is there. Alright, so this looks like a good candidate to upscale and that's what we are going to do. Again, the latent upscale is bypassed, the face detailer is bypassed, we only use image upscale and this is the image that comes out. So we now have two images and the left third of this image should be identical to the right third of the previous image. So what we can do now is go to a image editor and stitch them together. And for that task you can use any editor that you like. Personally I use Krita because it's free and it does everything that I usually need to do. I create a new image and that has the size of 7000 times 1600 that should be large enough for these two images. Um, well, let's let's do that live. Here we have our empty canvas and we are going to load the first image as a layer. And let me select it and it is already in the correct position here at the left side. Let me load the second image as a layer and that also ends up at that same position. So we are going to move it a little bit with this move command. I'm also going to make it a bit transparent such that I can see what I'm doing uh, with respect to the image that is below. And this is a roof here. This roof of this building is a quite good uh, position to look uh, look if we, if I shift it we can we can e easily see that right now it is pixel perfect in place as le at least it looks like that and also here in the sky I almost see n no um, seam a little bit but we could uh, do some uh, polishing uh, but we are going not, not going to bother with it right now and if I change the opacity back to normal then this is the image that we now created this is how it looks when it is finished and this is uh, only two images stitched together but of course we can repeat the same process with uh, three four five uh, the sky is the limit amount of images this is it, the unpainting. You get a seam with in-painting. You can more or less get rid of that seam. And of course you can have several iterations and you could even Photoshop a little to uh, improve if it is needed. Um, thank you for watching and maybe see you back in the next video. In the meantime, have fun.